Welcome to the Ignorance of Strength Podcast. I'm your host, Fabian Motherfucking Ojeda, and I don't know shit, but that's okay. All right, all right, let's get this shit started. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the Ignorance of Strength Podcast. Hope you enjoyed episode number eight with Miguel and Kat Huerta. I seriously think that was a very interesting couple. Quick reminder for everyone, if you like what you hear, subscribe, like, share, do all that other shit, do whatever you got to do, because I'm trying to grow this podcast organically, and what helps the most is when you recommend it to a friend, word of mouth, best way to get it done. With that out of the way, I have quite the guest today. This guy chases his dreams and helps others achieve theirs. He's a coach, a lifelong pro wrestling fan, and a big guy with a bigger heart. Welcome to the podcast for episode number nine. George, Twinkle Toes, Hernandez, how you doing, man? What's up, Fabian? How's it going? Good, good, man. I think uh, at the time of recording, man, we're kind of at the tail end of this quarantine, so it might be close to over or even over by the time, uh, you know, it airs in a couple weeks. But how have you been dealing with the whole quarantine thing, man? Uh, I think the first couple weeks, uh, I because I was, I mean, I went from work to, to practice to just, you know, just hanging out, doing doing things here and there, and uh-huh. to go just shut down. Like, pretty much having, like, 15, 16-hour days to zero to do. But yeah. I work at the high school, so uh-huh. we got to stay home that, what, March 15th, 16th, and yep. I haven't been back since. Yeah, man. Like, I, th- I work at a school, too, and, like, ever since the second week of March, at the end of that, I'm just like, well, shit, what do I do, you know, because... They'll give me, like, remote assignments, but I'm like, okay, I'm done with that in an hour or two, you know? And it's like, I have staff, and I check on them, but it's it's really not the same. And I think if you, you know, you're somebody who kind of has your heart in uh, in, in in working with, with kids and whatnot, it, it, it takes away from, from your day a little bit, right? Yeah. I, dude, I was, I was struggling to where a couple of weeks ago, uh, I called a couple of us. So uh, one of the coaches called me saying, hey, dude, you know, let's get out and, and let's go out there and uh, – Get a couple of girls go to the park, you know, just uh, have a little uh, bandy practice off, you know, off the tee into a net. Mm-hmm. Cool, we got there, breaking the rules a little bit, and <laughs> within two minutes, two minutes, the guy from the park comes and say, "Hey, man, you there's you go any walk or jog here? There's no standing around. There's no no softball, baseball." Right. Uh, and I was like, "Okay, you know, wake me up a little bit, yeah. and then boom, no, got kicked out." <laughs> You've been trying to do like your own like uh, quarantine haircuts or anything like that, man. Uh, actually, I, I took a little, little 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 thing from you. I um, uh, started barbecuing, cooking. Oof! I, I see you always posting ribs, so hell yeah. I try a little bit. Of, I try a little bit of ribs, like only on the grill, only in the oven, uh-huh. boiled first in the oven, boiled first on the grill. Yeah. Uh, I haven't tried smoke. Uh, to smoke them, my, my buddy has a smoker. I don't have a smoker. Right. But uh, we we've uh, we've been doing steaks, different kind of steaks. Make them different, season them different. Yeah, man. So. Uh, Right. Yeah, that's it. I spent like uh, about a bunch of meat one day from some spot uh-huh. at two hundred bucks, and just cooked everything a little bit different. Try yeah. it all out. You got, you got to get that smoker going, man. That that smoke makes such a difference in the. Oh, uh, dude, flavor. that one you got that brand new. Yeah. Oh yeah. fuck yeah! I see that. It should look nice with the wood chips and everything, you know. So you got to get that nice uh-huh. that nice taste in there. But it's good, man. My I buddy think... does. Uh huh. He, he he smokes it, and he does a uh, pork belly. Oh man! Oh man! Hey, like I tell everybody, I'm pretty sure Jesus ate that at the Last Supper because that's that's some good shit right there. <laughs> Probably did, man. Um, but you know that's the thing about the quarantine. I've, I've been telling people, you know, I always ask this question now because it's like it's out there. The quarantine is out there, you know. So it's like, um, but I like I'm curious to see what people are doing because I feel like it brings uh like the creativity out of people. It brings the fucking chef out of people, you know. Um. Like so many people are cooking, you know, really good stuff or they're rediscovering talents that they had. You know, I started doing a little bit more music. I started this fucking podcast because of it, you know. And so I I think it's interesting to ask that question because it's like, you know, everybody has a little bit of potential in there. It's just I think sometimes we uh, ignore it because there's not enough time in the day. Yeah. So you got all the time. No, yeah, actually, actually, the biggest thing I did, I bought a I I got a dog, Rottweiler. All right. He was a puppy. A little bit bigger now. He's about 16, 17 weeks now. I got him when he was like probably eight weeks. So pretty much that week after it started, I got him and been him ever since. It's getting big. Uh, mm-hmm. Not my first dog, but the first from like a straight puppy. So training him, yeah. doing that. It's pretty cool. He's, he's, he's a good dog. So yeah. that's probably the biggest thing I did. It's hard being a good pet owner, man. I'll tell you that. 
oh yeah, this guy's always wants to come in the house and finally sleeping outside. And he already knows, like six fifteen in the morning, he comes, he comes to my my side of the, of the house and starts starts crying and stuff. Like, oh, just let me in for a little bit. Like, <laughs> Damn. Cool man. He's hey, you still yeah, on are you still in Facebook jail? Yeah, <laughs> I, I was in for thirty days. <laughs> uh huh. And then I got out literally for like 13, 14 hours. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then I got a message that said, hey, you're going back 30 days, boy. Oh, so I was like, oh. I always see you, see, you see you pop up with that, like, oh, I'm out of Facebook jail for a bit. But it seems like you're like repeat offender on there, man. I, I Yeah, I don't think it's people uh, uh, like reporting. I think it's more like how Facebook has that, that new they just check words and this and that. And I, I just, I talk a lot of shit. So yeah, a couple words here and there that get some, and they're like, Oh, this guy's already done it so many times. Just get him. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cause the other day I tried to post something about my friend Whitey. Cause we did a podcast on him and it flagged my shit. It says like, Oh, you know, if you, if you're, you know, repeating your racism again, you're, we're going to, you know, ban you for a couple of days. I'm like, that's his nickname. He enjoys it. <laughs> you know, like his, his <laughs> yeah. family calls him that. You know, but that's just kind of crazy. I remember what I used. Uh, yeah, I used dyke or something. Yeah. Brought me out twice in a row for that word. I was like, man, bastard. <laughs> All right, man. So on my end, you know, I really wanted to interview you because I, I actually, I, I heard you on, on one of uh, Hector's uh, early podcast episodes on the Cool Kids Table podcast. Um, yeah, I was in the second or third one. Yeah, and, and, and that's actually the reason why I, I listened because I, I, you know, I listen to a lot of wrestling podcasts, you know, um, and... <laughs> Throughout the week, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm done with all my wrestling podcasts. And I saw that Hector had a podca- podcast up. I'm like, well, shit, who do I listen to? I'm like, I don't know that guy. I don't know that guy. I'm like, I know George. I listened to it. I'm like, I thought it was pretty cool, you know? I think uh, a lot of what you guys talked about, you talked about bullying, right? Yeah, we talked about bullying, sports, uh, just growing up, I think, in the hood a little bit. Uh, yeah. It's like a lot of different stuff. Yeah, definitely. I, 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 I The part that I really kind of – uh, gravitated toward was, you know, the, the bullying part. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm pretty old school too. Um, a lot of what you said, I think resonated with me. I know it was a lot of stuff that you talked about on there, but do you think you can kind of summarize, uh, you know, in a few, few, few words, uh, what you said about, uh, bullying? I, I think it was more, I think pretty much it's just like, I think parents has got to pretty much bully, bully proof their kids, teach mm-hmm. them how to, how to defend yourself. Yeah. Uh, because well, there's going to be one day they're not going to be able to go tell a teacher, not going to be able to. There's not going to be no one around, and they have to defend themselves or defend their 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 woman or or mm-hmm. or their man or whatever it is. Then they're going to have to punch someone in the face. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it's. I mean, we're not old guys. I mean, what, 33, 34 years old. Yeah. And so it's not like we're not out of out of sync with these youngsters, really. Mm-hmm. But it's just this whole generation is just like really soft. I agree. And, and they're just not, they're just not with it. Like they're more on social media. Like I could do this, I could do that. Mm-hmm. And, and and I see a lot of people knowing uh, having a lot of kids and, and uh, having separate accounts. So I, I uh, like Twitter, separate Twitter. So yeah, I can see all my kids post, make sure they're not posting uh, anything dumb. And a lot of times they're just like posting stuff like oh, like street fights. And like this guy can't fight. This guy oh, like half ninety five percent of my team has never been in a fight, but they're posting mm-hmm. this. It's like, oh man, it just got Jeff. What was he doing? Like, oh, you know, none of you guys ever been in a fight in your life. Mm-hmm. So, for someone watching this video of a guy fighting back, defending yourself, whatever it is, like, you have a lot of, a lot of nerve to be talking crap. But, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, man, but pretty much it's bullying. For bullies, it's kind of, you got to defend yourself. Uh, parents have seen the bully, like I said, bulletproof their kids. Uh, mm-hmm. Just fight back. Am I telling you, whoop, whoop his ass and, and, like, you know, beat his ass? No. Mm-hmm. But hey, punch him! With, hey, I bet that one time when you just had it, you punch him in the face, and you get a little fight, you're gonna live. Uh, I bet you he stops. Right. One of the things you said, I think, uh, that really stood out was that you know the kid that's being bullied should basically be prepared to get in there every day and fight back because you know eventually the bully is gonna be like, you know, I don't want to fight every day. I'm like, huh. yeah. That made some sense, right? Because like if you're the if you're the, you're the asshole kind of pushing it all the time. You know, you want to do it on your terms. You're not trying to, trying to, you know, uh, get in a fight every day. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, just going in there like, hey, what? What, are we going to fight today? Hey, mm-hmm. what's up? No, no, no. And then I bet you little by little, this guy's just going to stop. He's going to learn his lesson. And not just with you, he's going to learn his lesson right with everybody. 
Like, damn, yeah. the next guy that does this, I'm gonna have to fight this guy. Like, mm-hmm. damn, I, I need to get in there for this. But like in high school, I was uh, I, I to be honest, I probably bully bullies. Uh, mm-hmm. there was just a lot of times I just play football. You know, you know, uh, I knew a lot of different people, and there was just times I would just hear people talk or or pick on certain people. But like, hey, dog, like, why are you talking like that? Mm-hmm. The way I use that word, like, I remember one time we're in uh, Miss uh, Miss Minnick's class, remember Miss Minnick, and she's oh, an yeah. English teacher. Yeah, good teacher. And, I, I mean, uh, a lot of people, you know, make spins. I think she's a great teacher. Yeah, yeah, she was she was always, she was always cool with me. But uh, mm-hmm. I remember this guy. He kept on. I had a neighbor and her sister. Her brother was a special needs kid. They'll pick him up, and he kept on saying, uh, "I hate that word," but he, he kept on saying "retarded." Mm-hmm. And it's kids retarded with you, and she's like, "Hey, can you not say that word? Like that's not a good word to use." Mm-hmm. Kept saying it, and I said. Hey, dude, she's asking. Like, I knew why. I, I wasn't going to tell him. It wasn't my place to tell him why. But I said, hey, you can't. I'll be just stop. She asked you nasty. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't give a fuck. So I remember we are going to turn off. Uh, she turned off the lights. So I remember back in the day, we had to roll in the TV. Yeah. Turn off the lights, all that. Mm-hmm. So we turned turn off the lights, and I slapped the dog shit out of him. <laughs> Boom. She were like, did you turn the light back on? Like, what was that? He oh. never used that word again for the rest of the school year. Uh-huh, man. I mean, it's it, it 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 stuff like that. It's just things that, like, I think you have to defend you, defend yourself, defend your beliefs, defend like everything. Like mm-hmm. you can't just get bullied. Girl. Like I, I can tell him, hey, Tom Malone, hey, you can't be bullied your whole life. Right. You can't be soft. You can't be soft your whole life. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, that's that's just me. I, yeah, I know it's a generation of it's a lot different than than me and you. But mm-hmm. I mean, it sucks. Yeah, and and I think you you mentioned too. It's not just kids. You know, it could be adults. Right. Like. Sometimes you walk into the workplace and there's somebody that who's just a fucking loudmouth, you know, over and over and over oh, again. Yeah. They're spewing their bullshit and everybody else is just kind of like eating it up. Like I don't, yeah, I, no. I don't. <laughs> I'll I'll tell you I'll tell you something back, you know. Yeah, this, I remember there was a guy. I was working overnight shift. I was working at a boys' home and there was this guy. And he's, he just came and he was just talking shit to everybody. And there was an older man mm-hmm. I really respected, uh, and he was just like. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Shut... And, he, and he would talk to me like that. I said, hey, dude, I've known you like two weeks. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, hey, don't be talking to me like that. Like, mm-hmm. uh, you don't know me. Like, just don't, like, don't talk to me like that. Mm-hmm. Kept on doing it. And it was really me, like, was like, whatever, I go and get mad. But we should disrespect the older man. I was like 60, 70 years old. This guy's like 25. Mm-hmm. Hey, bitch, go get that. We're like, hey, I want you guys to stop disrespect. It's kind of bully for you right here, <laughs> You're bigger than me. Probably about, not probably about the same size, size wise, high, everything. You're the big dude. Mm-hmm. So one day he's just like, hey, Get on my seat. I said, Are you serious right now? Mm-hmm. And he did that thing, you know, trying to make you flinch. Right. And we're at work, and I just, what? <laughs> he gave him the first time I ever stopped anybody with my left hand, but it hurt so bad. It hurt my hand so bad. Uh-huh. I remember he, he, he dropped his hot sauce, his chips, and I said, What are you going to do now? I, I told you three times already, dude. And he's just like, He looked. I said, What are you going to do? You, you want to fight? And he's like, No, man, no, we're at work. I said, Okay, well, we can fight afterward if you want. I, uh-huh. He never spoke to me again. Oh. Uh-huh. You know, talking shit. He picked up his salsa, picked up his chips, and fucking went to the other unit. Yeah, I mean, and it, that's just me. Like I just, uh-huh. yeah. like I'll try to talk, and but I'm not gonna talk for forever. I'm probably just gonna end up punching you in the mouth. I guess. Especially now at, old, at an older age, and, <laughs> and and not want to get in trouble because working with kids, and I don't. Like, uh-huh. Oh, well, you have you smacked this when you call the cops on you. So I, I try my hardest not to. And it's been years, probably yeah. since then. Like, probably that's the last time over five years ago. Right, but it's. it's is just something that's still to this day like if it happens it happens I, I, I don't mind right the instinct is in you at some point and i think that's where you you know at some point you develop it and i think you know um i've been interviewing a lot of people that grew up in almani so there's a recurring theme on the podcast where we talk about you know growing up almani right do you think that your mindset your habits in regards to bullying um has to do in part with growing up in almani oh definitely i mean I think that uh, all the whole neighborhood, the whole uh, uh, city, just, just made me. I mean, out of my parents my whole life, but the, but I, always, I used to like hanging out on the streets and, and with my buddies, and that just made me. You couldn't you couldn't be a punk out there. Yeah. And, uh, what were some of your experiences just, like growing up, and uh, how did it shape you? Like just good, bad, and ugly, man. If uh, so, I started from young. I mean, I went to I went to Monte Vista, and I mean, I was just we're always in. We're always just like. Back then, you, know, you rode your bikes around, you're tough kids, and, 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 and you're everywhere. You're all over the streets. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I read out those were like my first, like, never bully, like, again, we never bully anybody, but mm-hmm. fights. 
we fought each other, fist fights, wrestling, whatever it was. Yeah. We didn't really know how to fight some more, like grabbing each other, throwing them on the floor, headlocks and shit. Uh-huh. But uh, just this knowing, because just being there and being like, hey, you can't, you can't get punked. You can't, you can't let them do that to you. Just or well, my uncles or, or, or even my parents sometimes or, mm-hmm. or friends. It's like, hey, you can't, you can't let them do that to you. You can't let them punk you. Yeah. And just growing up like that. And that's, I mean, it's not just, of course, it's not just Armani, but everywhere. But uh, at that time, um, I think, and then when I got into my my junior high, uh, I got I, w- I was a little too too crazy. Uh, I got did a little in more fights and actually got in trouble. I I did a little time in juvenile hall and stuff, and mm. and it, it changed me. Yeah, uh, it helped me out a lot. And I never wanted to go back anywhere like that again. Because uh, if I went into high school, my thing was like you know play sports. But still, I think in high school I got it at least a couple of fights a month from freshman year to senior year. I mean, after I graduated and it was just, it was just on mine at that time. You didn't, it's, you didn't go on the internet and be like, fuck this guy or, mm-hmm. or wait till I see you. Like, Hey, yo, we can meet up and we can fight. Right. Like there was his cell phones. There was this, there was that. And that was his growing up in Almani. I mean, you see fist fights all the time. I mean, I would have probably been the first, I would have been Kimbo Slice before him if there was cell phones <laughs> back then. Yeah. They had YouTube and, and all that, right? <laughs> yeah. And we were, we were out there fighting, fist fighting and, I could say I've been in over, not not proud of it. I've been in over close to 50, 60, probably street fights, fist fights. Like, what, 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 one of my share, I mean, I lost care. Mm-hmm. Uh, got me pretty good. But, I mean, I always went back. But, hey, seen him again. Hey, we could do it again. Mm-hmm. And they always said, nah, nah, we're good. I said, cool. I, I took the last whooping. Mm-hmm. If, I, if I were to run it back, if you want to run it back, that's cool. That's cool me. Like, fuck it. Like, but just growing up on money, man. I, I mean, I love to see it. I know it gets a, it gets a bad rap. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I mean, after growing up, I, I always, I did always want to get back to my city, uh, right. change the, um, uh, the way people see it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I started out trying to help out the set. I started working, actually pretty much building, uh, how build the Jerry Cheese boxing gym in, in Albany right there in Lexington in the Valley mall. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was still young, probably just fresh out of high school, uh, coaching high school sports in South Dominion and Albany. For, for years now, for almost 10 years now. Right. And I think just growing up in Almani, you see that. And I think there's a lot of other cities like you grow up in and, and, and that are like Almani that I don't got to get back. They got this, they got that. But mm-hmm. I know what Almani do have. I know what Almani doesn't have. Right. And, and, and I wanted to give that to them. Right. So we're going to so, actually, we're going to jump into that. I'm glad you brought that up because, um, you know, just the meat of things that I wanted to really discuss um, is the following. So we're going to discuss, you know, the concept of giving it back and paying it forward which is something you jumped into right now. Um, then we'll talk a little bit about a, a, a little bit of a recent history you were involved in as a coach. You know, take some social media says comments about teamwork and success. And then we'll close out with some common interests where you and I will talk a little bit of pro wrestling. Um, so you started touch, touching on the concept of giving back. Um, and I bring this up because, I, like you mentioned with coaching and everything, I see you giving back to the youth all the time. You know, and I know the value of giving back um, – what was given to you at some point, you know, but you know, who, who initially gave you like the spark to want to give back? I think it's just coaches, to be honest, uh, yeah. coach Wilson. I mean, you know, you know, you know, coach Wilson, yeah. and I'm, I'm not you, uh, uh, Mr. Pineda, mm-hmm. old freshman coach. Um, even, even someone like coach Alonzo, uh, and these guys that, Guys like that, this high school, high school football coaches that just mm-hmm. were there and were cool and were like some of the coolest dudes and 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 really down to earth. And I'd be like, man, you could you could be like this for kids, like and like they'll listen and the, like kids like me at the time would listen more, mm-hmm. uh, uh, respect. I thought like respect them more because they were just like, hey, you know, do this or that. They always you know jump around with you. Hey, you got to do this. Hey. I felt like you would listen to these guys more. Right. So they kind of like molded me, and, and I got a lot of what I, I do today from them. Mm-hmm. And as I growing up, the, the coach I coach under right now, Coach Seems, uh, uh, taught me a lot of, of giving back and, and the way to, to be with kids. Mm-hmm. Um, that's pretty much what I got from this people that that mentored me and and, mm-hmm. and taught me pretty much everything I know. Yeah, you know, and I think same here. You know, I did I did wrestling, and that was my sport. You know, and I think uh, the reason I was compelled to kind of give back um, initially, you know, when when I graduated high school was because I had great wrestling coaches. You know, um, there was, uh, you know, I, I consider him, you know, one of the, one of the most motivational people in, in wrestling I met, uh, 
think you you know him. Uh, he he coaches at South Almani now. Uh, Ray Castellanos, he's a great wrestling uh, coach, man. Yeah, we took actually me and Ray. I, I know we're pretty good. At, uh, they fire actually fired the South Almani baseball coach last year mid season. Okay. And they called me and Ray, so me and Ray took over the baseball program last year nice. at, at South Almani. So he they asked me want to do varsity and and him do JV and then. At the end, I said no, and then they really needed me. So next day, they called me. So he ended up doing varsity. I ended up doing JV baseball last year, 2018 season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, well, 2019 season actually. So, so yeah, that's where I met him. I kind of knew him from coaching at Sacramento, mm-hmm. uh, but that's where I really met him and got to know him. Yeah, that really sparked my interest. You know, he had a lot of guys come back as you know, like uh, kind of walk on volunteer coaches when I was a freshman. I thought that was pretty cool. You know, so oh, I think yeah. that always kind of stuck with me. But even so, you know, working with Coach Gomez as well at, at Mountain View, um, you know, he he brought a different flavor to to the sport, and he kind of you know uh, where Ray was kind of like the kick your ass and get you in shape uh, and motivate you type of coach. Gomez is more of the you know the thinking man coach, and 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 that yeah. did a lot for me as well. I think um, you know he show he he I mean he was able to t- uh, take us to like you know, wrestling camps and wrestling clinics as well. And um, that to me, you know, as a fucking poor kid who would never be able to afford it otherwise, <laughs> you know, I, I, I appreciated that a lot. Right. Yeah. That, yeah I know Gomez now too. He's, he's a, he's a, he's, he's up there, there, right? In the district, like a yeah. principal or something. Or principal. I think he last time I seen him, he was at a Royal. Yeah. Oh, he's back at Mountain View. Yeah, back at Mountain Mount View now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, th- I mean, yeah, that's so, yeah, around. That's another bit of motivation, man. That guy, while he was coaching, you know, was getting his masters, and now he's, you know, an, a, a big admin and everything. And so, like that, you know, it's not just it's not just the the sport of it, but it's like you know the life of it, you know. And that um, that's another way I think that that Gomez motivated a lot of people as well. Yeah, I tell you, God, it's like Wilson too. Like he he's always been a always you know a jokester, but like you know you gotta do what you gotta do, and and I let you know that and. I remember he kept on going. He said, like, hey, hey, Wilson, what's up? Why are you doing practice early? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? He said, like, I got to go to school, man. I got class. And then, boom, he got his master's. He said, like, hey, why, why stop? Why stop your education? Just because mm-hmm. he, he's pretty much doing already what he wants to do, but why stop? Mm-hmm. You know, why stop your education? That's something I, I see from him. I thought, I thought was real cool, too, that uh, that Wilson had did. Had mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. You've, you've actually coached a lot of sports, right? Yeah, I coached. Uh, I started coaching baseball like i think it was like the 08 or 09 season at south Almani. Mm-hmm. i did two two three years there and then uh i said oh, i wanted to coach football mm-hmm. uh i was actually going to call the old Almani coach uh, sanchez mm-hmm. and they said hey guy, i knew him kind of good uh i had covered sports for for a while in mid valley sports so i was just like let me talk to sanchez see if you see if you need somebody mm-hmm. i was gonna wait for uh christmas vacation to be over right and i got a co- a, a phone call from coach c Coach Santaceros, he's at Armani High School now. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, George, uh, I wonder if you want to come on board over here in Norwalk. Mm-hmm. So I had this guy started coaching baseball at South with, um, with uh, Coach Roy, and then I was just like, yeah, yeah, I'm down. So uh, it was just after I knew him real good. I, I had followed him the, week, the year before that I went to the finals. So mm-hmm. I went to Norwalk with Coach. I was, I was I coached football there. I coached baseball there. Went to Chino for two years football, and then I said I wasn't gonna coach no more. Mm-hmm. So I started coaching softball, which I hate to say it, it's probably my, my favorite sport to coach. Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you know it, what it, it is, it, real quick. I think um, coaching girls it gives you a different dynamic. I think sometimes you know all the emotion they put into it. You know they they really do want it. It's you kind of trip out because you're so used to like, nah, this is a guy's thing, you know. But when yeah. you see the girls work really hard at it, I think that's why. I, I don't have any kids, you know, but it must be kind of like almost like a mini version of like having a daughter kind of thing, you know? Yeah. That's what I tell them. I said, I talk some shit. Mm-hmm. And the boys, you know, tell they give them their feelings sometimes and they look at you. And, and maybe it's a manly thing, like, oh, fuck this guy. Mm-hmm. But the girls are like, hey, coach, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> like, like they, took, they took it. And, and I was hard on them just like, oh, it was the boys. And they took it better than the boys. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it was awesome. And then, I, and then finally, what, three years ago, we went to, uh, we started we started coaching at uh, Almani, mm-hmm. and then so that's when I really came back to the to the neighborhood and started. So I was coaching through I did three four years softball at, at South, and, and then side to side with three years of football at Almani High School. Right. So that's really giving me back to my neighborhood from 
the city I grew, I grew up pretty much in South Amani, so giving back mm-hmm. to that city, and then I always hung out on Amani, so I was, I was, I was, you know, just giving back there. For sure. And we'll talk about how most recently you've been involved in coaching football at Almani. Um, yeah. And I bring this up because we're going to talk about again that little bit of history. But before we get into that, I want to I want to set the tone for uh, you know coaching, and I want to talk about chasing dreams because I know you to be somebody who's always you know chased his dreams personally, and uh, you've done a lot of different things that I know you're proud of. What are some individual accomplishments you're proud of that you went after? I think this uh, doing uh, MMA, which I mean you you were one of the first guys I wrestled with ever in M- uh, MMA, uh-huh. Tommy. Uh, Tell me my first grappler. You know when I tell me, "Hey, go to Rio. They got they got a good uh, mm-hmm. program there. You can enter the class." And I did I did two two semesters there just wrestling. Yeah. Uh, just just to get that in. Uh, I mean, I fought. I mean, that's probably the biggest thing I did is just this fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, a dream that I always, I always wanted. And then I was ranked number seven in, in the United in, in North America as a, a super heavyweight kickboxing. And, nice. And then my coach was just like, "Hey." It's, it's called pro. So mm-hmm. I went pro five, didn't go my way. Took a little, little damage over my eye. Mm-hmm. Uh, ref did, ref did like what he's seen. Uh, when he do that little thing with your finger, yeah. stop the fight. Uh, they said, everybody says, everybody, even his fans, that, like, hey, man, if that way one more round, like, you had him. Mm-hmm. I mean, after, after the fight, um, I went to, because we found TJ. Mm-hmm. So I went to, uh, we went to the beach, to the bars, and the other guy was the hospital. So, yeah. I mean that, that that shows a lot. I mean, I only kicked the guy twice, but yeah, those are just two things: just fighting, and, mm-hmm. and that's one thing I always want to do was be a pro fighter, and and, and that and I, I made it happen. Right. You know, that's. I mean, a lot of people, you know, like when they talk about like, oh, I have a you know a dream to do this, I want to do this, they never do it, you know, because of, like yeah. they let some sort of fear, uh, trepidation hold them back. You know, um, it's hard to just jump into things and. You know, um, like when I tried the whole MMA thing, I'll, I'll be honest, like I wasn't even like 100% into it because I had other priorities. You know, I was working yeah. a lot, you know, um, I was going to school like full time. Um, but when when the opportunity presented itself, they're like, hey, you want to you, you want to fight in a couple of weeks? I'd never thrown a, a like a punch in a, you know, like a like an MMA fight or anything like that. I'd never trained MMA, uh, MMA or boxing or kickboxing. Uh, but yeah. I, I think the the fight was at the Ring of Fire, and uh, my friend Matt at the time he goes like, "Hey, you want to you want to fight like in a few weeks?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'll do it." <laughs> you know, I just I just kind of jumped into it, but I didn't have the the goal of like, you know, I want to do this long term. I want to do this as a as any sort of career. I just kind of jumped into it, but you know, uh, when you have the passion to want to do it and it's a goal of yours, I think it's a completely different dynamic. Um, because when I did it, it was just kind of just like very like. Uh, it's just another thing that I want to try, you know? Um, yeah. It's unfortunate because I really had a huge passion for wrestling, especially in high school. You know, I, I, I went to uh, a lot of things on my own, like the real Honda class that you were talking about. I would, yeah. I would go as a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior on my own uh, to real Hondo every, every Monday and Wednesday night, just to get an extra practice in on the off season. You know, if I didn't have a ride, I'm like, fuck it. I'm running it, you know? Oh. From Mountain View to Rio and back, but um, yeah, I could, uh, wrestling was probably actually the hardest thing I ever did. I remember they'll stop yeah. and like, okay, change shirts, change up, because yeah, you were just drippy sweat and you're in that room in the back wall there, and it was just like, man, uh, wrestling is probably the hardest thing I ever did to train. Yeah, I mean, it, I think it's just because you use so many muscles you're not used to. The cardio is, you know, oh yeah, uh, it's crazy because you wrestle for like thirty seconds. It's like running running a goddamn mile, you know? Yeah. <laughs> But, yeah, that was, that, was, that was one of the hardest things I did with wrestling. Sure. But yeah, I mean, that's probably just like the only thing. I mean, and of course, becoming a, a, a respected uh, respected coach in the area was that's another thing I've done. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of coaches out there that, that nobody knows or do it, do it for this. Or I hear coaches be like, well, I'm not going to do it if I get paid. Yeah. I haven't got paid for softball ever. I never got paid for baseball ever, mm-hmm. football, but six seasons I got paid like half the times like mm-hmm. I mean, if you're doing that if you go out there coaching for the money man you're, you're not doing it for the right reason unless you're <laughs> yeah. high and you're making those hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars but like when you're coaching high school sports you're not doing that shit for the money no man it's like the stipend isn't even that that good it's like yeah. a couple thousand for the season it's like alright wipe my ass shit, with that football. 
yeah, we started football in January, and this year we end in December. Uh-huh. What, we get like $3,000? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> for the, a year. Yeah. The money's chump change, basically. But, yeah, it's just pretty much to buy the kid stuff, because you end up just putting mm-hmm. it back into the program pretty much anyways. Or gas for gas, your car. Yeah. 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 So, so, I bring up the whole chasing dreams thing. Um, and how your mindset is around that, um, because I think it adds to the mindset you must have as a coach. You know, I, I tease a little bit of history, but, you know, like like uh, a lot of people in Almani, I'm sure, know you were part of the coaching staff for Almani High School state championship team last year, right? Yeah, actually, uh, it was weird because I, I, so I coached five years with Coach C. Mm. Uh, was actually going to take a year off. Mm. Uh and as he started coming around, I said, hey, coach, you're not going to help out. I was, I'm always a big stats guy. I love giving the perfect stats. Like, if he had 150 yards, I'm not going to give him 160. Like, I see a lot of guys penny, penny stats and stuff. And mm-hmm. So I'm just that guy. Like, I want the exact numbers, and I want his stats, their stats up right after the game. Mm-hmm. Hey, coach, you know, I'll, I'll break down film. Mm-hmm. I'll send stuff. I'll send notes to the kids, and I'll uh, I'll do stats. I, I just feel like I couldn't be committed 100%. Like, I would want my kids to be. Mm-hmm. And I and I felt like I couldn't do that, so I said I'll just I'll do this. Mm-hmm. So the first couple, I think I missed the first two games, and and then I still did stats, I broke down film, went to went to a couple of games, and then uh, something happened within the, the coaching. Uh, one of the one of the well, actually one of the coaches had a kid, mm-hmm. so he had he had to take a couple of days off. His wife ended up being the same in the hospital, so he had to take a couple of days off. Another coach was uh, had just got a new job, and he needed like a week to to, to get his schedule right. Mm-hmm. Hey, George, can you come back? You're clear, you know, just come. So, and in the back, like week three, or that night, you know, maybe like week four or five, and then mm. I was there for the for the re- for the rest of the season. But of course, I renewed the kids, right. same kids we had three years. Uh, so I went there, and, and yeah, it was a part of the history. Yeah, man, was this was this Amani High School's first state championship in football ever? This is, this is the first state championship for football in San Gabriel Valley history. Holy shit! That's that's a big deal, man. So a lot of these teams, like I mean, Chad Oak has a lot of say of championships. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bishop Amar back in the day, a uh, Royal one in 2016, um, and and there's teams out here, of course, in the SUV that won say of championship, but mm-hmm. state playoffs. A uh, Royal got knocked out in the second round. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chad Oak got knocked out in, in the regionals, and we just had this the perfect perfect season. I mean, it was 16 and 0, mm-hmm. well, actually 15 and 0 because the team. Uh, for the chap for the championship actually forfeited because they right. got in a fight before the game before the week before, so hey, we would have whooped their ass anyways. But <laughs> 15, 15, 16, no, we we're just on another totally different another level. There was a team that was one of the favorites to win the whole thing, Orange Vista mm-hmm. Studs, two Division One uh, guys, and they're just like after the game, uh, their coach came to our coach and said, "Hey, our, guy, our my my guys are bigger than yours, but hey." How do you make your kids so tough? Mm-hmm. Our, kids, our kids are just so tough, and this this six foot three, two hundred fifty pound guy that runs almost a, a under under a five mm-hmm. at the end or D tackle or whatever, and then our little one hundred and eighty five pound Mexican guard just pulls and just hits them every time, mm-hmm. and just wears these guys out. Just a bunch of tough kids, and of course we had some great playmakers, and I mean the feeling was it took a long time. It took mm-hmm. a long time to get that, like, did this fuck? Did it really happen? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, probably until, like, around New Year's and everybody was talking to you and then they are having banquets and we are having, getting awards and plaques and the city was coming and make, giving us stuff. That's when it really started kicking in because it was like, who would ever thought this Almani High School, out of all schools, mm-hmm. Almani High School is just 6 0 state. Division right. five double A champions. It's just like, damn. And, and, you know, you talk about the kids in there, like, being tough. To me, that screams heart, man. That's all heart, you know. You're yeah. just, you're I mean, we run a different style of offense. So you watch, you watch so a lot of these teams in high school. They want to run that what they see on Sundays, mm. but they got they got they got Friday night talent, mm. uh, and they want to run this run and pass the ball and spread and look and look nice. And a lot of schools could do that, but there's a lot of schools that can't. So try it. We just ran the ball. Mm. We had kids. We had a we had a dude, Devon Booth. He rushed for almost three thousand yards and fifty touchdowns. Mm. We had another guy, uh, Abel Cueva, 1,500 yards and another 20 touchdowns. Uh, and they're just, we just have studs. Yeah. And they're just out there just ready to work, not afraid of nobody. Mm-hmm. Other teams with these monsters. And, mm-hmm. and like you said, we got our little Mexican kids from the 
it's, it's Mission Valley League, but we like seeing uh, the, the Mexican Valley League. <laughs> we went out there and, and worked and, and got it done. And it was a, it was an amazing feeling. I mean, that's one. Of course, one goal you set when when when, when your coach is to win a championship. Yep. It's never like oh, as, as long as we know how we win a record or let's make the playoffs. Like, Fuck no, mm-hmm. we want to win a championship. Yeah. And it was weird because our first year in Almani, we had five and five, and that was the only year I've ever missed the playoffs as a coach, and that was the only year my head coach ever missed the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So he's just, I, I'm, I see one of the assistant principals, Mr. Flores, and we're talking. I said, yeah, we didn't get in the playoffs. I said, you know what? I said, but with this team, we're all sophomores. And they're over there, all sophomores. And I said, mm-hmm. hey, I think this is the first time we've ever not missed mid the playoffs, but I think it's going to give us our first championship. It's mm-hmm. going to give us our first half championship. Uh-huh. And two years later, I see Flores, and he remembered. He's like, hey, remember you told me? I said, yep. <laughs> I told you this team, this is, it was especially These kids worked hard that year. I mean, I think... A lot of other coaches around, I some great coaches by I me, mean, but there's some coaches that maybe win two, three games with that, what a team we went 500 with. Mm-hmm. And then the next year we went, we went 10 and two, and then the next year 16 and 0. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, but it's, it's weird because I go around, I go around the city and, and be in the neighborhood because I, I actually live in Covina now, but it's mm-hmm. been in the neighborhood, go to parties here and there, and there's always somebody, mm-hmm. hey, Jordan, what's up, man? Hey, that's fucking awesome, you know. Yep. Sh- like people, you wouldn't even know. Like, I mean, I know them, but we we'll followed the game. Like, yeah, we, we went to uh, we went to the post and, and we bought tickets and went to the post and watched it. Or we ordered it, we ordered it, and we watched it at home. And it's yeah. like that's fucking awesome, dude. Thanks. And it, it was to this day. Like, I see people. I did this a couple weeks ago. Like, oh, you coach Armani? But like, yeah. mm-hmm. oh, dude, congrats. That was awesome. We followed you guys, and yeah. and it's, it's, it's fucking yeah. It was just, I think uh, it was a lot. It was it was. People, I think some people think like, ah, whatever, Armani is small, you know, smaller division right. school. But a lot of people in this, this in our whole neighborhood just recognize them and just, and just were happy about it. Yeah. And, and just I'm proud I'm proud to be a part of Armani, even if exactly. they didn't go to Armani. I said, they went to Mount Dora Road. Right. Like, I was in the same boat. You know, I was like, I was kind of watching online too, like uh, all the different updates. I'm like, damn, man, like I didn't even go to Armani, but this shit feels good. You know, like, yeah, to, just, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's funny because actually in my last high school football game at Mountain View, we played Armani and we beat them. That was the first right. league win in seven years, the Alonzo's last game, and we beat Armani. Wow. So when I got to the school, the, I remember when I got to the school the first year, I said, hey, you know, guys, I don't like South. Definitely like a Royal Rose me. I said, but you guys are okay because my last high school football game, we beat you guys. <laughs> and I go on and then we end up coaching for them and, and having the greatest season pretty much. And actually, we became, we were a team of the decade uh, for the Tribune team of the decade. Wow. Well, I mean, if it's the first ever uh, yeah. San Gabriel Valley State uh, Championship team, then I think that uh, that's appropriate. You know, but you, yeah, men- and you mentioned, and I think this is a great point to bring up, right? It ignited the city, right? Oh, yeah. Everybody, oh, yeah. there was so much support. You mentioned people, you know, at, oh, I still call it Lampost, but yeah, the, at the Post, you know, pizza. Yeah. You know, basically watching... Like if this were like a big pay per view event, right? Or if like this were like a like a little mini Super Bowl, um, I think you know this is one of the first times that I've seen so much like unity and support uh, in the city of Almani, um, and I, I mean people were literally following every move. You know, um, talk a little bit more about that. Like I know you said people yeah, like. N- I, I think it was I more. There's things that, that happen in the city that people come together for that that uh it for the best. Someone got shot. Someone uh mm-hmm. cop smacked somebody and, and they go there like, you know, all together and all supposed to be united. But I think this really was the the first time I seen something positive, positive bring yeah. the whole city together. Mm-hmm. Not just this side of the city or or this block or or, or whatever or there, these group of kind of people, it was everybody. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I grew up in the, I grew up in the, in the hood, and I knew from the from the neighborhood, uh, uh, teachers from other schools, or, uh, everybody old older white guys that used to go to the school that I, I man, just mm-hmm. like hey, a World War II veteran, ninety something years old with Salmani, mm-hmm. seen the first CIF championship they had like in nineteen, uh, you know when it was, but sixty right. something I think, uh-huh. and he's like man, he's like he was there, he went to our parade, and he was just like man, he's like out. Oh, He's always seen the first CIF championship, and then you guys won a state championship. Uh, some of the, like some of the things like get a little emotional because like man, some people are just like real pumped about it. Is 
Mm-hmm. Just that pride people people have in their city and this and to bring us a state championship there was just mm-hmm. fucking awesome. And, and being my city. Like mm-hmm. I thought like we could have won it at Norwalk if we would have stood there those other two years and we could have won a championship. And that would have been great, but I think doing it in your own city is just fucking makes it even more and I'm the only I'm the only coach on varsity staff mm-hmm. that's really from the city of Almani. Right. Like Another guy grew up, he, he went to Rosemary, he grew up in Almani, but he, he went to Rosemary High School, so he mm-hmm. was on the, on the other side. The other coaches from uh, uh, Barstow and, and uh, Paramount, so it was like, I'm straight Almani. Yeah. So raised. So, it just, uh, I think that was even more, more, like. More powerful, yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think that's important, because, like, Almani is, like, oftentimes, like, overlooked or, you know, just kind of brushed off. And I, I think this city I, and this accomplishment gave the city, but the kids overlook kids uh, more opportunities. Like, how many have committed already to playing in, in college? Yeah, we got one, two, three, four. We had about four kids this year. We had two last year, the other two in community college mm-hmm. at a JC, just because they could have been D1, but those grades, yeah, got to get those grades up. And then, and that was before we got there. If we would have been there all four years, they would have been gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we have another couple of kids this year that, that are going to play uh, junior college ball. Mm-hmm. And but even just playing junior college, like you can see how many kids go and play football after high school. Right. So us having maybe six, seven kids this year going to play at, at a higher level, it's fucking awesome. Yeah. Uh, you got running back. Our running back uh, is probably going to go to Eastern Washington Division One. Mm. Uh, our other two guys are going to go to uh, Laverne Division. That's Division Three. We have another guy from Arizona Christian. That's Division Three. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a couple guys, Cerritos is one of the top DCs. Got a mm-hmm. couple guys going there. So I just seen kids want to want to uh, go out there and work after high school and, and, and keep on playing ball. That's mm-hmm. that's a big plus too. It's, it's motivation, you know. And also I think this um, will also make people want to be part of a winning team. So maybe instead oh, yeah. of having, you know, kids move to another school in the area just because, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's seen as like a better team or whatnot – Maybe they'll want to stay at Almani uh, because now there is that, you know, precedence that it's a good a good team or a good school for football. You know, you yeah. s- I see it all the time in, like, wrestling, for example. You know, you would see kids who didn't want to wrestle on Mountain View, so they went to, like, Arroyo. They went to Rosemead. Some of them even went to, like, Northview. Yeah, you know, so it's like they left their, you know, where they should have gone uh, just to get a better opportunity in their sport. Yeah, that's actually – that's how – when we got there, like everybody went to Royal, went to South Amani. Mm-hmm. Uh, our second year, you know, we won some games, and then and a lot of people talk shit. They're like, "Oh, you're recruiting kids are going to your school." Like, I mean, hey, dude, we don't talk to these kids. The kids come, they show what we're supposed to do. Now you can't play football for us. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you're a bench warmer at, at another school and you come on to play football for us. Go ahead. If you're a stud, mm-hmm. you're better. Mm-hmm. But like, uh, so our running back Devon Boot, he uh, he came from Las Vegas. Oh. Uh, he has he has he has he has his own he has his own story of, of why he came, but it was a uh, not, not what everybody thinks. So he came. Uh, he lives with one of the coach coach takes care of, uh, takes care of him, and he never played high school ball. He played pop Warner and stuff, but he never played high school ball. So his junior year was his first year of high school football. Mm-hmm. Twenty five hundred yards, forty touchdowns. Senior year, almost three thousand yards, fifty touchdowns. Oh. And uh, oh, he recruited recruited from where? Yeah. He's kind of never played high school high school football high school sports in his life. Right. And then another uh, we had a couple of kids that came from uh you win when like when I said, Well, what's that movie? When you build it, they will come. Field of we dreams, won ten right? games. Yeah. yeah, we won t- we won ten games and uh two kids came over from another school mm-hmm. and they wanted to play for us. Well no. They're in the school and they transferred into the school, came out, they're big parts of our team mm-hmm. winning and it was just but they forget like we had three guys from other schools but we had 50 kids in that roster and everybody played. Right. So I'm with those other uh, uh, 40 whatever kids that, that is putting in work all of our, our guys that are with us for three years and worked hard from 115 pound running back until this year he was about 145 pounds and now he's playing Division three football next year. Oh. So I mean I mean it sucks a lot of people are going to talk shit like I think when we're in the team of the decade and all, and all this we were like oh but they're Division 12 for CIF and they won a Division 5 state championship like mm-hmm. I, I, I like to compare that to uh, like weight tosses in in in, uh, in boxing. Right. Like you got Fury, you got you got Wilder, you got these guys, the heavyweight. So that's like basketball modern day. Mm-hmm. And you and you got those great boxers and they're like uh, Lomachenko and, and and Danny Garcia and them that are 
135 pounds, 130 pounds. And what's the what's the difference? Just just the weight class. I mean, we're in a lower weight class, and we, and we won. Right. And nobody, I guess, was the best box in the world. Probably Lomachenko, and he weighs 135 pounds. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that's that's how we've seen uh, uh, the different divisions in 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 football, especially and 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 winning because everybody wants a, a bad mouth because we're in a lower division. But hey, we we don't say hey, put us over there so we can win. We we played where we were put, and we fucking won. Yeah. But so fuck them. Yeah, man. Good, good, good way to look at it. I like that comparison too. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, teamwork, right? There's an old saying that teamwork makes a dream work, and so that's kind of like uh, the 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 whole. Uh, I, I have the social media says portion of the show, right? And that's what I wanted to yeah, get people, yeah. people talking about. You yeah, know? you get right on your stuff. Yeah, I usually write on your stuff. Uh huh. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Yeah. I remember you said something about OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you know, uh, teamwork makes the dream work. That's a common saying, right? Uh, before we get into the, the, the comments that we got online, um, what are your thoughts on that? Does teamwork make the dream work? Or, I mean, I think you'll have a lot to say about that because, I mean, uh, the other question I put on there was, you know, are you better off chasing your dreams on your own? So yeah, talk a little I, bit about that. I think I, I, anything you do, I mean, if you say, the fools that say uh, uh, self-made or, or – all this, and never done it by myself. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I was molded by my parents and uh, my mom, and my dad, and then it went to to. I felt like just a team in my, and just a life, like everybody from home to coaches, mm-hmm. um, teammates, of course, my trainers. I mean, when I started fighting, I had my trainers, I had Mark and Allen, mm-hmm. and you, you're part of the team. You helped me, you helped me on the wrestling when a couple of my fights, and you show me stuff or, or. Um, it's just forgot that your brother came down one time, and it's uh-huh. like that's all teamwork. That's all teamwork. Made yeah. me better, um, and definitely like like South Bay guys. Like I think I think when people say that, it just kind of makes me laugh because I know their story, or everybody knows their story. And it's like, are you serious? Come on, but yeah, definitely teamwork. I think it's it's a must. It's it's a must in, in life. Mm-hmm. Got to work it. I mean, everybody just I says I'll not explain it. Uh, there's always there's someone out there that, that, that you need or something out there that you need that you can't, that you can't get that you're going to need help from somebody. Right. And, um, yeah, that's just my thing. Like teamwork always, of course, being a coach and telling the kids to work, but even being a fighter, it's supposed to be, Oh, well, you're in there by yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm in there by myself. But who got me there? My right. trainers, my trainers taught me this. My trainers watched the film for me. My trainers taught me how to check, taught me how to punch all this shit. Like that's all teamwork. So, Right. Uh, that's just that's my, my my thoughts on it. Cool man. So let's get into the comments. So we have Stephen Bejarano, also known as Stephen GB Music on Instagram. He says, "If you want to run fast, run alone. If you want to run far, run together." I think that's an old uh, African proverb. Thoughts on that? Uh, I never never heard it before. <laughs> I like it. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess like. I don't know what to say about that. Like, it's just, I guess everybody has, has their little thing. I, I never heard that before. Yeah, so, I mean, it says if you want to run fast, run alone. That makes sense because, you know, you don't have anybody kind of like, uh, for lack of a better word, like yeah. holding you back. Yeah, holding you back. Yeah, okay. slowing you down. And then if you want to run far, run run uh, together. That yeah, makes sense, too. Get, pretty much you get further with a team. You get further with your team, I think. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I think, to me, I see it as... You can get to a certain point by yourself, probably quicker. But with a team, you can make it all the way. Probably you, 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 what you want to do, what you want to be. For sure. All right, we got a couple of siblings in the comments next. First, we got the older sister, Raquel Centeno, on Instagram says, I think it depends. If you have a good supporting team, it can be an awesome asset to help you achieve your goals. But if there's even one Debbie Downer with a team leader that does not know how to lead it, uh, it can become a detriment to the entire team. And in that instance, you're better off alone. Oof, bad leaders. What do you think about that? I think you gotta. I, I don't think they can. Can like what you see the bad leader. You just can't. They can't be a leader no more. You right. gotta. You gotta still still work together and get rid of that cancer. Yeah, I've had my fair share of bad leaders. You know. Yeah. All right. So now we got the little brother who was a f- uh, previous guest on the show. Rafa Centeno on Instagram says, teamwork is essential in certain situations. 
military platoon, squad, team, as well as in healthcare. You can't run a full code blue like Johnny Rambo. You need competent people by your side to accomplish a monumental task. However, in some instances, there are certain teammates that uh, cause a team to underperform due to their apathetic attitude. If you find yourself being one of those people, uh, do everyone a favor and fucking leave. As a leader, <laughs> uh, I'd rather be short-handed than to have uh, someone uh, do their job that, that that does their job poorly. What do you think about that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a good one. I like that one. Yeah, just um, like you said, like pretty much what he said is you got to get rid of that, get rid of that cancer that's just holding you, holding you back, slowing you down mm-hmm. uh, in a negative way. I mean, there's some people that just trying to help and just can't do it. But if they're in a negative way, mm-hmm. like you said, what, Debbie down or whatever, like, if you're that kind of person, you just got to get rid of them. Did you have to cut any kids from, from the team for, like, behavioral issues or just lack of hustle? Uh, last year, I think we had, like, one or two. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, just not team players. want to do their own thing. want to go to practice when they want it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and... This guy, guy had to get rid of two, and not just past season, not the championship season, but the season before that. And I think they seen that. A lot of people see that, like fuck, he'll cut us. And that guy was—he was a dude. Like he, he started for us, and he was starting to be, and he got left his ass back. And yeah, I think when you see that, like that, this guy, this guy's a dude, and they let him, they let him, just, they tell him kick rocks, like mm-hmm. shit. You got that shit happen to anybody. So yep. So next we have. Uh... Your good friend, Hector Aguilar, host of the Cool Kids Table podcast. You were on his podcast. I was on his podcast. And hopefully he'll be on mine soon. On Instagram, he says, he repeats the African proverb. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. He says, I'm a firm believer in that. Uh, in that, I always take the lead and give people positions. If they don't like it, I let them lead unless it's necessary for me to take the lead. Depends on the situation and if you're okay with being a leader and not a boss. A boss will tell people what to do. A leader shows them how to do it while contributing. If it, if it's like personal goals, say like running 10 miles this week, some people need that other person to hold them accountable. So they go run five times a week. If it's like a group goals, I'd say everyone putting their part is definitely beneficial. Yeah, that's another, another good one. Yeah, Hector's a, I've been around Hector. He's, he's a leader, so. He knows about that teamwork, and he sees he's been a part of sports. Like I mean, he's a he's a play baseball and uh, he plays soccer now. But mm-hmm. I mean, like this always goes back to like teamwork. Is this always not always, but sometimes probably the most of the time probably the easy easier way to go for you if you have that right team around you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. Okay, we have uh, Anai Calderon on Instagram says I prefer teamwork because if you don't know something, you can ask for help, and you can also learn from others. Pretty simple, straight to the point, right? Yeah, it's another one. Yeah, just got that team around you to teach you. Mm-hmm. And this, the same thing goes for her. Like, so if someone don't know something, you just ask, ask, ask me, ask her, ask you, whatever. It's a teamwork. Yeah. Okay, next we have teacher, former wrestler Kyle Vondren on Instagram says, having the right team makes all the difference. Otherwise, do it yourself. Yeah. Um, I guess that's what you said. It's, it's having that right team around you. I mean, you can do great things. Yep. Win a state championship. But I mean, do it yourself. I mean, there's only so much you could do. So what are you gonna co- I mean, you accomplish great things by yourself, but those end of it. I I just don't know. It's just I've always been a team guy. It's my my whole life. I've always been a sports guy, fighter had my team, everything. So I just doing stuff for myself, yeah, I could do it, but I've always like I always get even if I'm doing it by myself, I'll call We'll see if I need something from wrestling. I'm trying to do it myself. Like, hey, I'm gonna call Fabian, ask him, mm. or I'm gonna ask uh, um, my my a guy that knows I know knows how to write good. Like, hey, how, how do I, how do I word this? Mm-hmm. I want to write this. So it's still, it's, I feel like they're still part of my team, and they still, they're still helping me. Right, resources you can reach out to. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, we have, in my opinion, legendary coach. We talked about him a little bit already. Uh, coach Ray Castellanos on Instagram. Oh yeah, Ray. No. <laughs> he says uh, anything is possible. If you have the drive and perseverance for success, a leader must lead by example, working, but also work in alignment side by side. So the whole team follows. Yeah. I mean, what you, what you're showing them, what you're showing them that you can do it and you're there and you're doing it with them. I mean, they're going to follow. 
Yep. And I think I think those those are the the like I can't even say because I said they're like those are the best kind of leaders. You can't just go out there and say, "Hey, I want this, I want this done," and you ain't doing shit. Like you go, you go out there and show them, and and, and you're that leader. Mm-hmm. And you know, follow you and have a great team. Yeah, for sure. All right. So, anything else you want to mention about teamwork before we close out this topic and move on? Uh, not really. I mean, just be a team player, man. Uh, Whatever it is, work, school, um, sports. I mean, it's always be out there, be, be coachable in, 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 in every aspect of life, not just sports. Just be coachable, let someone be teachable. Let someone show you, and, and, and you'll see you all, you always come on, on top. Mm-hmm. Cool, man. Appreciate that part. So we're going to switch gears completely and talk about something fun. <laughs> I, uh, I haven't really had the opportunity to discuss this on the podcast but I'm a huge pro wrestling fan, and I know you are too. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I've seen like I, I mentioned this because I've seen your online comments, man. I think uh, you're you're a bit of a heel, man. You get a you get some uh, you get uh, some enjoyment out of getting the cheap heat, huh? Yeah, yeah. I'd be, I'd be out there uh, having those. Uh, uh, what's the M- MJF? He's a yeah. the AEW. Like, fuck, he's he's a. He's an old school heel right there, uh-huh. and yeah, I, I, I think that's what I am. It's those little, those little pops that kids like. Oh, damn! He said that, or he did that. Like, yeah. I, I mean, I watched wrestling my whole life, probably since I was five, six years old. Yeah, is that? Do you remember like your earliest memory watching it? Oh, dude, my as my, my uncle Dicky, uh, rest in peace. He, uh, we would go to the store. Uh, my grandma lived. On this off of Dennis and Durfee, right next to Arco Gas Station. Before it was Starbucks and all that, there was houses right there. Mm. Back in over twenty, about uh, over fifteen years ago now. But um, we'll, we'll go to the store, buy like some chips, buy Minnesota. Always bought plums. I just remember that I always had plums. Mm. Come back, punch my great grandma's. She wore sun hats. She always hung them on the wall. We we'll punch it. She got all mad at us. Sit down and just watch wrestling. Mm-hmm. Uh, where we go walk to the little those, remember those big trucks white trucks you walk inside grab your snacks walk out you bam whatever mm-hmm. like those uh, we'll go back and again just watch watch wrestling every, every weekend I remember uh, WWF would be like for over 50 years the most yeah. dominating yeah uh, the most dominating sports and sports entertainment or whatever and uh, and I just remember seeing it once I heard that I sit down watch it watch wrestling uh you know, WWF at the time still had Warrior and, and Hogan and uh, uh, the Bushwhackers and the Nasty Bites. They had all these guys. And then I remember this, and then this exploded and it's changed. And there was the Attitude Era and yeah. NWO, NWO, which got me. I remember I was a WWF, WWF guy, and I would just be like, uh, going to the channels. And then Spanish Channel would have WCW. Uh-huh. I don't know Spanish. I don't know Spanish, but I'll stop because I seen Hogan, I seen Nash, I seen Hall, Macho Man. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. So I'd watch it, not even knowing Spanish. It was like the the the, the Spanish version of, of Nitro or whatever. And I'm watching, and then WWF kind of turned into the Attitude Era. But I was still always a WWF guy. Right? I was mm-hmm. so, or Monday Night Monday Night Wars through everything, and I never then watching a uh, Attitude Era happen. It was it was Austin and and DX and Kane and all and Mick Foley and all this like yeah so I go way back that's over that's the 96 NWO 98 and that that's yeah. DX so I go back that's over what that's, that's a long time yeah oh, my, 20. my first memory for sure I remember I was like three years old and I and I have these weird like spurts where I can remember things from being three years old but yeah. I specifically remember standing in the living room and then wrestling challenge comes on um, on channel 11 um, and you see the fucking Ultimate Warrior just beating on his chest, shaking the ropes, yeah. fucking colorful, aggressive, like explosive. I'm, and he's beating up some jobber. I'm like, what the fuck did I just watch? You know, that was like something. I think because we're all like as young boys and people will debate this now. That's why you see so many pussies out there. But I think we as young boys, like we have that fucking warrior inside us, you know, that wants to come out. You have like a little bit oh, of, of fucking you know, uh, primal, uh, like, urges that, that at some point need to come out, you know? Yeah, you just want to be out there and just be yeah. crazy. Yeah. Let, let it all just, just let it all go. Just release everything out of the day. 
mm-hmm. fuck, I remember watching wrestling. And that's how I found it. I was just, I remember going outside by myself and just like fucking wrestling with air, like <laughs> fucking yeah. doing little moves here and there. And then I got, we didn't have a lot of money or, or like you wouldn't even see them around. And my parents would order me stuff from magazines mm-hmm. and you wouldn't see them in stores. I would make like my own, uh, championship belts. Yep. Um, I would have like maybe, you know, a handful of action figures. So I would have like other one like X Men and stuff. I'd be like, okay, fuck it. These guys, Shawn Michaels instead. Yeah. He's not real green, Shawn Michaels. And this guy, like, yeah, dude, I fucking love wrestling to this day. It's just, it's been a part of my life for fucking close to 30 years now. It's just, you know what I used to do? Still, I, I post, can you see, I don't know if you see my, my story sometimes on, on, uh, on, on IG or whatever, and it's like... I'm getting used to it, because I'm kind of social media dumb when it comes to Instagram or whatever, because I just started it for the podcast, but I'm getting used to it. Yeah, so I, I'll post, like, videos in there, like, a, a picture of what I'm watching. It's like, it's raw, or, it's, or, or uh, pretty much with the with WWE app, it's that uh, old In Your House. Old Royal Rumble's always been my favorite uh, yeah. pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's always something. It's something I remember. Or I watch YouTube, and I see something, but I oh, they talk about that match. Oh, I want to watch... 1993 Starkey Theater versus Ric Flair or something uh-huh. like. I go back and watch that stuff and and it's just and people still try to like. You still like I always get little comments like you still make fun because they know who I am and, and they mess with me but they're not. You still you know it's fake right or, or this and that right. And I'm like that guy in the stands who's like it's real to me. <laughs> it's real to us. And he's crying like yeah that, that's like me right there. Uh-huh. Yeah that to this day man I just it's it's fucking it's getting I feel after the. the Quarantine's over. It's gonna um, get better because it's in a slump right now. Yeah, for a while, it's, so. I think it's rebuilding though. You know, like uh, you see a lot of new people kind of taking uh, taking taking shape a little bit. You know, like even with the empty arena shows, they have like all the cinematic shit that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, but I think WrestleMania, it, WrestleMania had those too. I thought it was gonna suck, man, but that that was pretty cool. Yeah, I thought the John Cena, uh, the Fiend was pr- pretty crazy. The Undertaker, AJ Styles wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. Um, even even the the Edge, a lot, a lot of people liked it because it was like thirty five minutes. I thought it was the cool. Edge Randy, yeah, Randy, Edge Randy, oh, yeah, I liked it. I'm like, oh, they're still going, but I, so I'll leave. I'll go get something. I'll come back. I gotta go to the living room, whatever. Do something. Talk to my mom. Mm-hmm. Come back, but like, yeah, I'm still on it. But like, fucking, but it was good. I I, I liked that. I thought it was one of the better matches on the night. Yeah, but uh, or you get like the money in the bank. <laughs> Yeah, money in the bank was crazy, yeah. but I thought I thought he, I thought I think AEW is doing their thing right now for quarant- for the quarantine. Uh-huh. I think AEW is being, being, you know, just with the uh, the way it looks. Like, mm-hmm. well, now the actually WWE changed it this last week. They put the wind like the the covers up and they have people like hockey. Yeah, yeah, but. Uh, AEW has done that, but they always had people, mm-hmm. and you see people here and there, and you can't really tell there's not nobody there because it was dark and they had like real close the walls and the AEW sign. Mm-hmm. You can hear the echo, but you hear people in the background, and I thought like, man, you can't even tell like it's after real. This guy kind of like a solid like indie show with people there and shit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, fuck, so AEW was doing it. And I, I mean, they don't have the superstars. Oh. I didn't get to compete yet, but hey, they beat NXT almost every week. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you got this shit done. They're gonna be able to sign a lot of those forty guys that got that got released by uh, WWE uh, about a month ago. Mm-hmm. And they're gonna, they're gonna get some of those dudes. I think I think the F- FTR just showed up this week. Mm-hmm. Revival. Well, they're not the revival. They're called FTR. Right. Uh, and um, who else? Um, yeah, I think, I think Russ is, is gonna gonna be back to uh, not where it was. I don't think you can ever be that era. No. That attitude era. You can never beat that. But at least, at least, uh, what was ruthless aggression era was was it bad? Yeah, you know, my favorite era was definitely like, you know, the golden era. You know, because that's where I grew up with it, with all the videotapes yeah. and watching, I, you know, superstars and wrestling challenge. You had a Hogan, Warrior, Macho Man, Ravishing Rick Rude, all the guys that had fucking character, man. Like, you knew like they weren't the same person in real life, you know. But yeah. when you watch them on TV good luck trying to decipher like who's who, you know, because they lived their characters, you know, million dollar man, you know, like they would have you believe that they were their character. Nowadays though, you don't really see too many characters like that. Like, and if they do, they kind of, it comes off to like they're acting, you know? And that's the part I don't, I don't really like too much. Um, you mentioned AEW. I, 
you know, I'm not a big fan of it, man. Like, right from the get-go, I mean, it's cool. I think it's cool that they have competition now, right? The WWE, WWE yeah. has competition because that's going to uh, force them to step up their game. But I don't know. I think with the AEW thing, it's like, for me, the reason I'm, I can't really get too much into it is because uh, they have a bunch of guys that don't look the part, man. They got, like... Like, who's one of the guys? Like, Jimmy Havoc. I'm like, that guy looks like a fucking skinny, like, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? Yeah. Emo, emo kid just grown up, you know? Or like Jungle Boy. Uh, you know, guy or the little guy, the fucking Rugrats guy. What's his name? Uh, Stunt? Marco Stunt? Oh, uh, that guy. Or Orange Cassidy, all these guys. Yeah, and... I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, to, to me, I'm just like, I can't really get into this, you know? Because part of, part of the appeal to me... Is that you got people on the screen that look like you know not your average character. people? I'm the, I'm the outside. You don't know that. Um, yeah, I think I think that's but they didn't have. I mean, literally when that show was getting made, WWE signed everybody, mm. took everybody from them. Guys that they thought they were gonna get, they took mm. guys like uh, uh, Marty Sproul. He, he ended up going to, to NWA, NWA, and I thought he was he would have been he would have been a good one. And then um, there's I think those guys, after after it's all done and, and all this happens, that you're gonna get be able to get some some meat mm-hmm. and uh, Rusev and and uh, mm. Gallows Gallows and uh, Anderson, and I think that was, that's gonna happen. I mean, their the tag team division is good. Mm. I think I think I do think. Uh, well, now the revival or FTR and 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 the Young Bucks, they get probably the two best tag teams in the world. So they got that going for them, and Jericho's kind of old. Yeah, I think he's one of the most underrated greats of all time. Mm-hmm. The great, but a number one, a number one one, no. no. Um, I'm not John feeling, Moxie. Yeah, I'm not feeling him. Ambrose, Moxley, whatever. Yeah, Ambrose, Moxley. He, uh, he's. I, I, I see those guys as always like intercontinental guys. When the intercontinental title was something, when mm-hmm. when uh, Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart would carry the British Bulldog and. I, I think those are those kind of guys. Uh, I think they need to get some guys in there and, and maybe build these guys up. Mm-hmm. But I don't think they have no – no nobody there would be a, a number one guy in WWE. Yeah. Maybe uh, mid, mid-card guys, but yeah. hey, I mean, they're building up. They're, they're learning. I mean, I mean, it's getting ran by a bunch of wrestlers pretty much from what, from the, from the, what I hear, well, what know, I see pretty much. None of these guys in the industry would be number one guy in the – Attitude Era or in the Golden Era, oh, you know? They'd be- so what are your thoughts? How would John Cena go in the Attitude Era or Golden Era? I think Attitude Era, he would have been good because if he stuck with the whole thug thing, you know, talking yeah. shit. I mean, he had the size, he had the look, you know? Like, he he was the prototype. Well, shit, that was one of his, his, his characters, a prototype, but he's yeah. a prototypical wrestler, you know? Like, no matter what role you put him in, dude would do well on TV because he looks like he belongs on TV. You know, and yeah, he, I met him, and I met he him when he was a prototype. I met him. What's that? I met him when he was a prototype. Yeah, right here in LA, Smackdown. right? Yeah, you know, SmackDown. Mm. He was just out there, and he was just they had the cable, and he was signing signing uh, flyers. I remember I got one. I met him, and then a couple years later, he's he's been the face for yeah. over almost two decades now. Mm-hmm. So about fifteen years, I've never been a fan. I've always hated him. Yeah, I, I I didn't like him too much, but I'm you kind of have to just respect all he's done, you know. Oh, bro, oh yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. But even even uh, Roman Reigns, I, I like the guy. They, I didn't get pushy the guys too much right now. Mm. Like Austin, who, who they didn't push him for us to like him. Hey, we loved him, and he was never a good guy. Mm-hmm. He was an anti-hero. Fucking, yeah, it's done. Whoever it was done. <laughs> women, hard, Shawn Michael, the he, DX, he or beat up whoever. women. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I. Yeah, this I don't know, Cena, Roman Reigns, those guys. I think heel, heel turns for both of them. Mm-hmm. If Cena signs way out, kind of like what Hogan was, like around that time, he was already old. He was probably older than John Cena was right now when he turned NWO. But yeah. if Cena did like a little a little heel turn, I think that'd be fucking awesome for 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 WWE. Yeah. Or even Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns was kind of turning before this, all this happened, and he, had, and he took his time off because he had he had leukemia and stuff. So yeah. he's not trying to get sick, but. I think he, he should go with the whole Samoan thing, man. Like, get rid of the fucking SWAT team. That's how look, he started. You know? Yeah, that's how he started. This was the Samoan. Uh, that's how he started looking. Like, when he started in NXT, I think he, he used this all like, like a Samoan guy. Just yep. 
no shirts and trunks. Uh, he had you come out with the looking like you straight look like you could tell you some more. Yeah, but the whole the whole like uh, the shield look. I mean, it's like all right, the group doesn't exist anymore. Take that shit off. Come up yeah. with something new, and I think that's what wrestling fans like is when you come up with something new. Like Macho Man, you know, he changed his look all the time. You know, he he yeah. he started with the with the the little bandana and the cape. You know, and then he started wearing the crown as King Macho Man or whatever. Uh, and then the crazy he hats. Black, all the, like, he went to the NWO. He changed up all black. Dyed his hair black. Yeah. Slicked it back. Became a pimp. Wore, had, had the beard. Uh, uh, yeah, he was just... He, he did it. Uh, who else? Uh, Hogan. Yeah. Hogan. <laughs> he straight changed the industry. After changing it when he got there, he changed the industry again. Mm-hmm. Like... With the NWO and it was just that was because I was I wasn't watching it yet, but like when I would, when I finally seen it, like I kind of knew he was in the NWO, but like you watching Bash at the Beach was in '96, yeah, like on replay, probably two years later, and I seen it, I was like, damn, you still get those get those goosebumps, like fuck, mm-hmm. <laughs> knowing something big's gonna happen. So yeah, I know like we all play wrestled as a kid, right? Did you ever consider trying pro wrestling at all? Honestly, that was that was. I think honestly, I think fighting was my B plan because mm-hmm. I wanted to be a professional wrestler. Really, I just there's honestly SoCal. What is it? SoCal don't want wrestling schools around here. They got the Santino brothers Santino, like out there, yeah. like Bray or something, mm-hmm. and um, that's, that's the only one I know. And they're expensive. Yeah, five hundred bucks for like <laughs> a couple weeks. Yeah, and it's like we well, go like. 1200 bucks for the year or some shit like that or and this and then for the months like 180 bucks and at that time I mean growing up and younger of course my parents were gonna do it uh, and growing up you mean you're not making like when you first couple jobs you aren't not making you're making that money yeah, yeah. so then I started fighting and, and I got got it real good with the guys at the gym so I started fighting for them so I was and then I was helping them so I wasn't really paying gym fees at, at fighting mm-hmm. And I fell in love with fighting UFC. I mean, I remember the first UFC I seen was I would always rent the wrestling videos, yep. VHS, and I ran out. Like, they had no more that I needed to see. I seen some two, three times already that I rented them. Mm-hmm. So I seen a, a, a UFC one, like one or two. And I was like, is this wrestling? And I remember I took it home and watched it. And I was like, oh, fuck. I was like, oh, fuck, these were fucking beating each other up. Yeah. I thought it was kind of like wrestling. And then I just, and then I became a fan probably like in high school. And, and, and I said, this is something I could do because there's gyms like you can go to a boxing gym mm-hmm. and then there's wrestling. You could do wrestling in high school and at the time. And that, that's that's pretty much all there was around here. And I said, like, you do boxing and wrestling, you can become a fighter. And it's like, it's kind of like wrestling. And then more and more you looked into it. And I just, I found love with it. I found love with fighting and yeah. a bunch of people. In the so that was kind of like, honestly, it was kind of like my beat plan because I always wanted, and to this day, I'm like, I mean, I just go. I make good money now. Maybe I just go and start doing, but <laughs> bad knees and and ten years of pretty much all over ten years of fighting. Of yeah. Torn my neck right now. Bad hip. Maybe. Fuck. I'm not gonna say no because I mean it's something I want. I went after everything, and like I think I said, heck for That's the only thing I ever went after. Mm. I wrote. I always wanted to write. Wrote for for a sports website and fought and coach sports and those things. I always want to do, but that's the one thing I've never done. Huh? Hey, but maybe hey, maybe get a couple more fights, get famous, and then uh, they call me up like they do uh, the Kobe Cummington and these guys that they're, that they're trying to bring in now. Yeah, man, this is a lot of crossover. Yeah, well, do you, well, you see it on uh, AEW last week: Tyson, Vitor Balfour, Hector Cejudo, uh, Rashad Evans. They're all on AEW. Yeah, they they did they did come out on that, didn't they? Yeah, but um, uh, I mean, yeah, that's that's the wrestling was something that I just. I've always wanted to do. I just, just never did. So I wanted to get a few questions in here about wrestling. Um, this one's not so fun, but I wanted your, 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 your thoughts on this. A lot of wrestlers like died way too early, right? Like how did, how did, how did, I don't know. Like a lot of fans, they take it very personally. You know, how did you take those deaths and who hit you the hardest? Um, what was the first, what was the first part of the question? That a lot of wrestlers died way too early. Oh yeah. I think, I think we all, yeah, this fucking is, that sucks. But I think, have you noticed, like, this new group of wrestlers, like, they're getting older, and, and like, that sense that, like, uh, Bray Hart, 
Shawn Michaels era, like they're still like in the fifties, going to be sixties, Hogan and them, mm-hmm. and they're still kicking. I think back in the day, I think just we all know they do roids and do this and that, they party. Mm-hmm. I think it was a lot less, a uh, lot less known about them. So I think nowadays they know, like, hey, we can't do this much, we can't do this, we can't do that. Mm-hmm. But it's it's always like it's always fucking how we suck. Is like Brian Pillman. I think I was watching the one of the pay per views, and that's what that Brian Pillman died. Yeah, but the one that got me on hard, of course. I just mm-hmm. I never watched. No one ever wanted to get pay per views, but I ended up getting at my friend's house that day when Owen Hart uh, died, mm-hmm. and that was fucking that one was crazy. And then. I think Eddie Guerrero. Yeah, that one. The, the tribute shows <laughs> fucked me up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'll watch them this day. Like, I was watching Owen Hart or the, or the, or the Eddie Guerrero tribute show, and you just, like, get all teary eyed and shit. Yeah, uh, try to watch it with, with a dry eye, right? Yeah, it's just like, fuck. Like, and you still, like, you know, and you know what's going to happen if you watch it. You still fucking put that shit on YouTube and still watch it. Um, I watched uh, where else? I mean, that one was great. It's fucking uh, Chris Benoit. Mm. That first night, that Monday night, when did a kind of like a little tribute show to him, and then the next day it was like, boom, yeah. never hear anything about him again. Um, who else? Is that, like I said, Brian Pillman, Crash Holly, British Bulldog, Mr. Perfect, Ravishing Rick Rude. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're all, oh, Rick Rude is, I mean, Mr. Perfect was only like 41 years old or something. He was young, uh, man, yeah. And, and then Rick Rude, I mean, I thought he was old. He was like in his late 40s. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot of these guys. Uh, Ryan Pillman was it? He was just getting started in WWF, and, yeah. and, it, and beginning a push, and then he he died. And yeah, man, it's just I, I think, think it's crazy. But I think nowadays, there's more. Like, we know more. Yeah. About about what they put in their body, and and that's why they did that lasted longer. I think what it was mostly but, was like the cocaine and and painkillers, man. You know. Yeah, cocaine, cocaine painkillers, and steroids. It's fucking did it all fucking mix up. I think, uh, like on my end, just because I've 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 always liked the the documentary Bigger, Faster, Stronger. I'm like, I kind of debate the the steroids one, but that's that's for another topic. <laughs> um, oh yeah, no, yeah. I mean, it's just I think it, it didn't help. Was it the cause? No, I'm pretty sure it was the cocaine and, and the fucking <laughs> and, and the and the uh, stero- I mean the the pills and shit. The painkiller. What Kurt Angle said he used to take like eighty painkillers a day or something. I think hundreds, man. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, oh yeah, I just wake up in the morning and grab a handful and just pop them in my mouth and mm-hmm. with well, no water or anything, just fucking swallow them like they're fucking candy. It's like, damn. I see a person do that with one and I get like, I get like gang. And this fool just pull out a handful of like M&M's and put them in yeah. his mouth. I was like, man, yeah, that shit, that shit was, that shit's crazy. I think one thing killer and I fucking get fucked up. Oh yeah, yeah. Can you imagine all the handful of them? It's crazy. Oh, man. Have you been watching the Dark Side of the Ring series? I watch I watch them here and there. I watch like little clips. I think I watched a little bit of Jimmy Snooker one. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the other one? I think it was LOD, I think. Mm-hmm. And then I watched the Owen Hart one for sure. I watched the whole Owen Hart one the day it came out uh, with Kimmy mm-hmm. I watched that one. That one was crazy. She still had the little hitch, that the little uh, hinge thing that, that, yeah. that broke when he fell. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was weird. But she... Uh, it seems like nobody's on nobody from his family's on her side. Yeah, nobody. From what I, yeah, from what I read after and from what I've been seeing, cause I, I watch uh, the podcast, uh, YouTube channel WrestleMania mm-hmm. and um, the Wrestle Talk, and they're like, "Yeah, like Bret Hart, nobody's like nobody messed with you know, the whole family." But I mean that one. Yeah, I watched that whole one. I, oh no, I watched the other one where. Uh, he killed the guy in the dressing room. He stabbed him twice in the in the chest. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With uh, Bruiser Brody. Uh, Bruiser Brody and uh, man, the other guy. He was like he was like from out there, Puerto Rico or something. Was he in Puerto Rico or something? Yeah, I forget. He was a masked guy. I, f- I forget his name, but yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, he went to the back, and then uh, what is his name? Uh, the big black guy. Uh, Tony Atlas. The one that grabbed him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He stopped him. Oh, you know what? I like the the um. The house, the WWE house, that had all the old guys that yeah, had this, that had Legends House. Like Jimmy Hart, yeah, the Legends House. Oh, dude, I love that. That show was awesome. They need to do another one of those, man. I know. I keep, I keep checking. I got these. We can do another one because they had a old ring announcer. They had a Ric Flair on it. I know. I did a couple no, guys on I it. I think it was so. 
Hillbilly Jim, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, uh, Roddy Piper. They had uh, what's the gay guy that's Vince's best friend? Um, uh, Pat Patterson. Pat or Patterson. The other one, uh, yeah. And then they had uh, Jimmy Hart. Uh, Harf- Finkel, Howard Finkel. Howard Finkel, yeah. I think that was yeah, yeah. And then Tony Atlas, yeah. I, I, I think Rick Flair and those guys went, though. I think they were on the show, but they were in a part of the house. I think Mick Foley had went over and, and, and like, Rick Flair, and they had talked. I, I, I think, remember watching every episode. They were fucking pretty good. I think if you were trying to get the big stars like that, it would probably be too expensive, man, because even... Oh, uh, yeah. Do you know what Cameo is? No. No, it's a, a service you could pay... Uh, like a celebrity to, to send you a message, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'll break a little bit of kayfabe here. That's how I got the Godfather message. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, yeah, I seen, uh, I uh, seen it Rick Roman Reigns is like, he'll send you a message for 250 bucks or or um, The Undertaker do it for like $300. Yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. Day. It's too expensive. Rick Flair, you know how much he charges? 500 bucks. Oh, fuck for like a 30 second message, huh? Fuck that, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, shit, I go to uh, Frankenstein. I go to uh, the meet and greets. Oh, that's right. Yeah, but dude, like some are some are like I met Sting. It was like Sting was like fifty and fifty, mm-hmm. so like fifty for a picture, fifty for autograph. Mm-hmm. But like, there's like guys. I, I did the NWO. I did uh, Scott and Kevin Nash, mm-hmm. and they were like, I think it was like sixty sixty. That's not bad for two foods. But like Hogan was like. 150, 150. Shit. Um, Undertaker was like 300 and something altogether. Like, that's all he did was like both of them, like 315 bucks or something. Like, what the fuck? Uh, Shawn Michaels, he was getting a little pricey. Mm. Not as bad as those guys, but yeah, like these guys. But they, but, and like, you see the lines that said, man, they, everybody here must be making money. With the guy that yeah. has them, mm. Frankie Sons, the wrestler, because, man, there's guys in line, like, Getting multiple things autographed and everything mm. to get autographs is like forty bucks. You, you know, you bring up Frankincense and it reminds me of like there's a very tight knit like wrestling fan community. Basically, you see the same fucking people at all the indie wrestling shows. Like I used to see them all at Lucha Underground. Even when you go to like a, an NXT show or WWE, I see the same fucking people. Man, have you noticed yeah. that? I actually, honestly, I'm a uh... So, you know, I coach, so we get, we get free tickets to go to, like, sporting events. Okay. Mostly, mostly college football. And we had, we have had a couple guys play in the NFL, so they'd give us tickets before. I'm a huge baseball fan, and my friends always go, and I get invited. Mm. I don't go to sporting, I don't go to sporting events. Oh, okay. I just, even wrestling, as much as I love it, I'm a, I can't be a lot around a lot of people drinking. I see, yeah. I'm not, al- I'm not alcoholic, I don't even drink, mm-hmm. but I get, I get uh, annoyed because they're in the background. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, this is bad. And it's like, I can't, I can't do I can't even go to a uh, wing stop. I mean, Buffalo Wild Wings and watch the UFC. Yeah. It's just, I, I'd rather watch it from home, honestly, by myself. Like, my buddies, hey, let's get it. I'm like, nah, I'm just going to stay at the pad. And I'll get it by myself. I'll pay for it and watch it myself. Because yeah. I just I just can't be around these fools. I'll get it. Fools getting all drunk and just like talking nonsense mm-hmm. or anything. So I just, I can't. So well, about, I literally only pitch like two wrestling events, baseball, my life, maybe like three or four. Nah, I mean, like five and football never. Well, you're not missing much on the pro wrestling end because it's the same <laughs> motherfuckers. Like, a lot of them are, like, super obese, and I don't think they have jobs, but somehow they always spend hundreds of dollars on wrestling, you know, thousands of dollars even, right? And I'm like... But I see that at every every time I go to a meet and greet, I see uh, the same people. Yeah, you like, probably... I've met people to where we even know each other, and, like, they hit me up, the guy Michael. Mm-hmm. He's like, hey, hey, you gonna go see Mick Foley? I'm like, oh, we got him. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll meet you there, though. Mm-hmm. Or you going to see uh, the Young Bucks. About, yeah, yeah, let's roll. Whatever it is. Like, there's a couple guys that I met there mm-hmm. that now they hit me up whenever something happens. And then they're cool dudes. And that's like pretty much the only time we talk. Frankie <laughs> sense. Yeah, you'll probably, you'll probably see some of the same people I saw. Man. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say. They're probably the same dudes you see. All right. So before we close out the discussion, I want to shotgun some questions for you real quick, man. So I got a few questions here. Just And give me your 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 like your, your first immediate thought on it. What's one dream match you wish you could uh, that you wish could happen, but it'll never happen? Austin, mm-hmm. Hogan, yeah, attitude there. Yeah, probably never happen. I mean, it it, it could. <laughs> I mean, because yeah, Hogan, we're still alive, but yeah, Hogan's getting in shape. Uh huh. But uh, I mean, we'll see. I don't think that'll ever happen. 
they're they're both too kind of you know fragile to put it on. I think unless you do like a cinematic thing. Yeah. Who who's the most overrated wrestler ever? I think uh, today I'm gonna have to go fucking Roman Reigns. Mm. For as long as I've been watching wrestling, um, I don't know. Uh, I think I just have to go. I probably go with Roman Reigns overall. Okay. Because I I just I don't see nothing that he has. Right, can't I talk just, or anything. And then they push him, they push him, they push him, and then Roman Reigns I think is overrated. Yeah. Who's the most underrated wrestler? Uh. Uh, oh, Kenny Omega. Oh. I think, not like, I think everybody knows he's probably the greatest wrestler in the world, but like, there's some of these guys, like WWF fans, WWE fans, whatever, mm-hmm. they don't know who he is. Yeah. And like, they don't see him, they would think, or, or even, even not him, Cody Rhodes, or even, uh, like I said earlier, Chris Jericho. Chris mm-hmm. Jericho is one of the greatest of all time, and I don't think people see him in that light as a top 10 guy ever. Right. Now, here's a fun one. Hottest woman oh. ever in wrestling. Oh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> this is a tough one, huh? All right. <laughs> yeah. All right, maybe give me three. Give me three. <laughs> I'll go uh, Mickey James. All right. Oh, Stacey Keebler. Mm-hmm. And, uh, dude, I like uh, Becky Lynch. Really? Yeah. I like, don't know. She's yeah. the first. I, 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 I pretty much I collect like, the figures. She's the first woman I ever bought. I think still the only one I ever bought. Huh. That one I oh, I have Sunny. Oh, okay. I have Sunny and Sable on them from back in the day. Oh yeah. But like those are the those are my three like that my three greatest was Stacey uh, Keebler. I'm like fuck Becky it. We'll Jane, do we'll then. do five. Fuck it. You can't choose. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I'm surprised at the Becky Lynch one. I and I, I, I hear that a lot from different people. I'm like, eh, I don't really get it. Maybe there's a different a different appeal. But to me, I'm just like, eh, kind of. Yeah, you know, I don't know what it is. Kind of buff. I think it's actually probably probably that is how she's changed like women's. She changed a lot of women's wrestling just oh. being the man. I did that too. It's just like, oh, yeah, you're bad bitch, huh? So that's, that's part of it. Okay, the mental part. And then, okay, let's see here. Last one. Just, and this one's tough too. Your top five wrestlers of all time. Uh, so Austin. Mm-hmm. Ric Flair. Okay. Kurt Angle. Nice. Mick Foley. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And that's what, four? That's four. Okay, uh, man. <laughs> Since there's a bunch I want to say, but like, okay, to be in the top five, uh, Shawn Michaels. There you go. Good, great performer. A lot of people I say the best. Kurt, Kurt, Angle. Kurt Angle is probably another one of the most underrated because he was gone for so long in TNA. Yeah. I think a lot of people, a lot of people missed him, but uh, man, he's fucking. He was in TNA I, longer. I go back and watch a lot of the old TNA when they were kind of good for a little bit, like when Mini Vet Mafia, I like that. Uh-huh. I, I kind of like that stuff. And they seen Kurt Angle work. And we missed Kurt Angle for 10 years, pretty much. Yeah. I don't he, know anybody that watched him. He was there longer than he was in the WWE. Yeah, because he was in WWE like six years and he left. Uh-huh. 10 years and now he's been back like three years. But yeah, Kurt Angle. Actually, I, I did a top 10 a couple like a month or two ago. Mm. I don't know after I forgot Kurt Angle. I had like, seen that. I seen a scene up there. Mm-hmm. The respect, of course, because you've been there so long and you've been the face of, of the industry so long. But how the fuck I forgot Angle? Like, how the fuck did I forget Angle? But yeah, Angle's fuck. He's a, he's he's a dude. And he picked it up. Sucks. I, I I hate that his last match he lost to a fuck Corbin. He's the fucking most <laughs> overrated motherfucker. I hate that dude. I think he's a good heel, man. I think he gets people to really hate him. That's crazy. But he they win. He wins everybody. What's like how do you how do you win how do you win angle to leave fucking his last match? How do, you, how do you get that match? You you know that old tradition though, right? The the wrestlers uh all all kind of uh adhere to that. They're like, you know, you if you're gonna go out, you gotta go out on a loss. Yeah, but that's why I thought it was okay. Cena. His first when Cena came in and uh uh the aggression era and they smacked him, slapped him and they fought and he beat he beat Cena that day and Cena became John Cena that day. Yep. Became, you know, they pushed him after that. Like, okay. And then I think that would have been awesome. This call with, with Cena. He beat Cena that first time. And then mm-hmm. to mix in his career. And then I'll see him going to take him, take him out. And, and then the, the, pretty much end his career. Or finish it off, whatever. His in-ring career. And it was just, yeah, I'm fucking horrible. I hate that guy. 
<laughs> All him right. And Rage, like, fuck. When him and Range were uh, like uh, doing the little thing back and forth, uh-huh. fuck, I hated it. Like, man. <laughs> That's funny. I, l- I like the 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 reactions uh, it elicits from fans all the time. <laughs> That's the fun part yeah. about it, right? Yep. Yep. All right, man. So, anything else pro wrestling related or related to the whole uh, podcast that you want to mention before we close out? Thank you, man. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, for sure. It's just it's awesome, man. Fucking. Hopefully, we get another football season in. Yeah. Uh, uh, we don't know. We don't know what's happening yet. Uh, maybe short season. Maybe no season. Maybe a season in January. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we, we can't go later than January because then it goes back to back football seasons, and I'll mm-hmm. have that. Um, so fuck the kung flu. Uh, <laughs> hey, he'll yeah, put you in Facebook jail again, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. I mean, I mean, my actually, I, what else? Uh, just can't wait for. I want to see the real. Was it Wednesday Night Wars and a real mm-hmm. after everybody signed AEW, whoever they signed after these three months, when everybody that got got a cut, and I want to see, I want to see this shit come back and see fans again. That's mm-hmm. one thing I think. I think I had read something that I thought I read it something about about wrestling and the fans. I think and kids these days. I I, I had read, read you, you wrote it or something, but I did all my all my buddies kids. Mm-hmm. I always said. Christmas, I'm buying them wrestlers, and they'll be fucking know the rest of but Oh, TV. man. That that gets me, because when we were kids, everybody fucking knew wrestling. Yeah. Buy yeah. yeah. the video game, like, oh, here. Like, oh, it's not TV, but I can. I got, I got a couple of my buddies for uh, kids into wrestling, and I buy them wrestlers, and you know, my old one, I had a whole box for me, like 80 wrestlers against one of my buddy's kids. Mm-hmm. It's like, he really likes it. My buddy likes it, too, so he's really into it. I love seeing when kids are into wrestling. And just, I think that builds you a lot, too, as, as just... Be tough, like I think so. Like, I can't, I can't, like you think, like just watching these guys and their characters makes you like. You get, honestly, you're not, I, I get to get bullied. Like, what the fuck? Like these kids, like you know, kids are these kids get bullied second, third, fourth grade, and they mm-hmm. see this, they watch wrestling. Like, fuck that, I'm not gonna get bullied. I watch wrestling. I see mm-hmm. this, I'm gonna fucking grab them, I'm gonna fucking throw them on the floor, or whatever. Like, and that dog, you're defending yourself, and that's one thing I think that wrestling gave me too. Was always like, fuck no, this yep. fucking. Hogan would get fucking bullied on me, fucking warrior. And honestly, that's one thing I think that, that made me tough and and and, um, mm-hmm. and everything was wrestling. Watching wrestling with my uncle, and yeah. I think that was one thing that really made me made me too. Was every day, every Monday, every weekend, watching wrestling. I, I'm on the oh, yeah, same so. same boat with you there, man. Because like I knew I knew pro wrestling moves. You know, I didn't know how to fight as a little kid. I didn't take karate yeah. or any of that shit. But yeah. when, when like somebody would try to like punk you or whatever, I remember it was like in second or third grade. I fucking, I, I got this kid and uh, you remember uh, Rick Rude's finisher, the Rude Awakening? Yeah. I snapped his fucking neck across my shoulder, man. <laughs> you know, because he's trying to <laughs> yeah, punk me. Yeah. I'm like, fuck that, you know? But you're right. You know? It was always like, pick mm-hmm. up like any fist fights I got in, like, I would be in the fights. Like, it was always picking up, slamming him, choking him, giving him a sleeper hold uh-huh. or, or whatever it was, like, grabbing their arm, like, like we were really fighting, like wrestling. Like I was just doing wrestling moves on those fools, like <laughs> body slam or something. Like yeah, DDT and shit. <laughs> yeah, it works. Yeah, but, but you're you're right um, though. It does give. I think it does give you sort of like a a little more confidence. And for me personally, you know, I learned fucking vocabulary, man. They use all kinds of big words. I'm like, I want to know what that means. You know, you would hear Gorilla Monsoon like. <laughs> Like, oh, it's pandemonium, and he hit him in the solar plexus. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? I want to know, you know? Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of things that even give me, make me a, a more, uh, even an outgoing person, because of the way they are on the mic. Yep. And I don't know how many times I'll fucking say, to this day, like when uh, uh, the new age dollars come out, mm. and they'll see the little, whole little thing, I still say it to this day, or, or this different yeah. stuff, and just being out there, and it's giving me, I don't know, confidence, uh, 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 personality, maybe, maybe tough for everything. Yeah. Overall personality. Yeah. Mm. All right, man. Well, we, 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 before we close out, any new interests or projects you're working on right now? Um, I just actually, honestly, I can hopefully get back to football. I started, um, uh, actually I made another, I have my Instagram. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know what it is. The real twinkle toes, five, seven, eight or twinkle toes, something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. But I have, uh, I made another one. Tatted, tatted collector. Five seven eight. Okay, 
and it's just I mean I know people see me and it's fucking whatever like they, they think they know me about hair tattoos mm -hmm. Armani shirts whatever it is uh yeah, I collect Funko Pops I collect wrestlers I go and I buy action figures I collect shoes so that, that's just something I I just put out there to have a separate page and just, and just post my fun stuff and, yeah. and I have all the I love Power Rangers my name more from Power Rangers I have every single pop I have all the old original figures uh so yeah this is I think that's another thing I did this thing I'm like I don't post all my shit I got uh -huh. I spent thousands of dollars on this and no one doesn't even see it so yeah. I just I, I, I post on that but Okay. Yeah, that's really it. If we have a football season, we repeat, get another another pair of rings, and I think that's it. But again, thanks for having me. For having sure, me man. on here. It's fucking awesome. Uh, we do, maybe do it again, maybe with somebody else. Yeah. Uh, well, that's against that's against wrestling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'd, that'd be fun. It's fucking fake. Yeah, or maybe some uh, social justice warrior, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of those fucking, uh, <laughs> like, whatever, like, whatever thing, I think whatever thing going on right now, uh, the rights and the looting and shit. Mm -hmm. A lot of people out there getting getting butt hurt. I'll say. I I mean I got I got a lot, a lot talk a lot of shit about. I'm not talk a lot of shit. Mm. I think it was wrong what happened, but I think I have a different opinion. That a lot of fools out there just trying to be fucking, just fucking get their doctorate through fucking Facebook posts yeah. and shit. <laughs> and I see that like you fuck what well, university go to university of YouTube because mm -hmm. I know fuck we both graduated from Mount Mount View before and you have what school sense mm -hmm. same as me. So, and they all think they know everything, and it's just like, come on, dude. It's just a lot of this stuff, but I think people think too much, and it's just a lot of shit, just common sense. Yeah. Hey, put your hands up, put them behind your back. I guess what? You're not going to get a fucking shot. But most of the time. <laughs> most <laughs> I mean, it's totally, it's a whole nother, that's a whole nother thing. But yeah, man, you got to get those guys on there. I know I'm a little bit out, out there with the stuff I say, so that'd be awesome to get on there with somebody else and For sure. go at it. I, you know, I always welcome any, any topic, so we might get something like that going soon. Um, but for the next, I, what I like to do is I like to ask uh, my guests, you know, can you comment on the next episode? And this will be the last thing we do. Um, the next episode is actually interesting because it's going to be episode number 10, so I want to do a little celebration. So what I'm doing is I'm going to get, um, you know, uh, three of my friends who have already been on the podcast and myself, and we're going to do kind of like a four-man uh, drunken nights of the round table kind of thing where we just talk oh. stupid shit, you know? So yeah. my question to you, man, is, uh, you know, how, you know, how, how, how important or how, uh, dearly do you hold like close friendships? I've had the same friends mm -hmm. since I was, uh, ten, eight years old, nine years old. Okay. So I have one friend. A, actually, a girl was in her wedding, her quinceanera. We went to different high schools. She went to Mile with my view. But I went to do her college graduations. She got her master's recently. So oh. I went to her, what is it, associate's, bachelor's, master's graduation. And and I think that's, uh, I, did, I did grow up with a lot of, around a lot of family. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of family, but I did grow up with them. Mm -hmm. So like everybody like, goes to parties with their cousins, hangs out. I didn't have that. So my friends are like my brothers. They're like my, they're like my cousins. They're like my, they're my family. So mm -hmm. they, they mean, more to me than most of my family. So wow. my, my friendship is like my buddy Robert, just tattoos. Um, uh, our friend Chance, my friend Marcos, Luciano. Like I, I know every single one of those guys, Jonathan. And we actually have a group chat mm -hmm. with my buddy Johnny, like over 20, 20 years each. Same guys from high school. So you probably see them when we hang on the high school. Good one then right down the wall next to the, next to the girls' lockers, kind of, we sat down. Mm -hmm. Same guys from high school, same guys to the day. Crazy. And it's funny. One of my girls, one of my one of my buddies' girls, said, "Like, man, like, I've never seen a bond of friends like 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 you guys have." It's kids party. We're all there. It's a, uh, it's whatever. If someone needs something, we're all there. It's uh it's just it's just something. That's probably one of the things I hold strong. It's like it's, it's cool. my friendships with, with a group of guys, or I, I mean, I can even meet someone mm. and I just become good friends with them and and, and be real close. And it's like, okay, we. You're a writer. I'm a writer. Like, like we're good. Like, you're in. You know, you know what I mean. But that's something I always hold. Sometimes too much to, to new people, but because I know a lot of people would like that. But mm. yeah. cool, man. But yeah, so that, well, that's one of my things. Friendship for sure. I'm looking forward to this next episode with my good friends. Uh, hopefully the uh, the alcohol won't uh, impair things too much. Maybe it'll make it a little funnier. But we'll <laughs> see. Make it, I'll make it uh, better. It's always better when I listen to some of the podcasts I know. <laughs> 
on Rogan and them and they start getting all, all faded. Uh-huh. And they're all, they start talking shit. So, yeah, those are, those are always good. Well, we'll see how it goes, man. But, again, thank you for being on. I appreciate it. Um, you're a fucking podcast veteran at this point, man. <laughs> Thanks, man. All right. All right, I appreciate yeah. everybody listening. Thank you. Fuck you. And good night. Podcasts on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Like, follow, and share on Facebook and Instagram at Ignorance of Strength Podcast and on Twitter at The Ignorance Pod.